Take aim. Fire. Reload. Take aim. Fire. Attach bayonets. Charge! <laughs> what up, dude bros? I'm Frank. Check out this 3D printed musket. It shoots darts in rival rounds, and it looks like a freaking musket. What year is it? So not in alignment with most of the stuff that I review on my channel. It shoots nerf darts surprisingly well, but it's definitely for the cosmetics or the emotional response to LARP, to cosplay, to feel like you're shooting a musket. Quick external overview of the blaster. Up front, we have a bayonet attachment. This can twist on and off if you want it or don't. This is not foam. This is 3D printed plastic, so you can't hit anybody with it. And it attaches to the little front sight peg right here. And interestingly, it doesn't go over or under. It's off at an angle like that. I'm not sure why, but this front muzzle is actually a removable attachment. It fell out by accident a few times during my testing procedure. It's not a super tight fit. But right under the muzzle is the ramrod. Yeah, I said ramrod. You need this thing to prime and load the blaster. So it's a spring-powered blaster, but to prime this one, you get the ramrod and you shove it down the barrel. And at the end here, I'm now touching the plunger head. So to prime, I'm just physically shoving the plunger head back. And then the plunger head catches, and I can remove my ramrod. So now I'm primed, I have to load. This blaster shoots darts or rival balls. There's a little internal cavity right here that is used for the rival rounds. And then behind that is the actual barrel, which is used for darts. So to load a dart, you put it in the barrel, then you get your ramrod, and you gently push it down. There's a little marking on the ramrod right here, which tells you to stop. Because if you push this any further in with a dart in there, the dart is gonna go into the plunger tube and cause a jam. There's nothing in the back to stop that dart from going in there because the ramrod has to go in there to shove the plunger head back. It makes total sense when you can visualize how it works, but it took me a few minutes to figure it out. So if you're using darts, just be extra careful not to shove this in all the way. But I'm primed and I have one dart loaded in the barrel, so to fire, you just pull the trigger. It shoots surprisingly hard for a LARPing toy. And the process to load the rival rounds is very similar. You first shove this in to prime it, pull that out, put your rival round right in there, and then you can just shove that in. Now the barrel is sized for nerf darts, so obviously the nerf rival round cannot go in there. So the nerf rival round is just sitting up in this front cavity. Because of that, the performance of the nerf rival rounds is much lower velocity than the darts. But you can't shove the rival round in too far to cause a jam, so if you're just trying to have fun, you don't want to have to think about not dropping your ramrod in too far, use rival rounds. It's a little bit more dummy proof. But then after you have that loaded in, your rival round is sitting about here, and you can just pull the trigger like normal. And to fire, you have to repeat that whole process every single time. It is a musket. It's a very slow rate of fire. But that's the firing of the blaster. You have the little ramrod storage right under the barrel right here. Moving back, we have sling mounts right here and right here. And then in the back, you have a really cool cosmetic area. Now, I've never shot or even held a musket, so I have no idea how realistic any of this is. But it looks pretty cool. So you can pull this little guy back to pretend you're priming the musket. So out of the box, this actually did hold back and it would catch. Then the first half of the trigger pull would just release this. So if you just wanted to click this back and make some noise, you could without actually shooting it. But unfortunately, my catch has blown out, so it doesn't work. But that is the back action system here, which looks pretty cool. But moving down to the trigger, the trigger pull is surprisingly normal. This blaster does not have slam fire. <laughs> the slam fire musket? Well, I can't even... Okay. My review template's breaking down, bros. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> but originally, this trigger had two functions. First, to release this little catch so this would snap forward, and also to release the real catch to fire. But that's the trigger. Moving back to the grip and the stock. So this looks like a musket, but again, I've never held a musket. This feels very thin to my hand, but I don't know if this is just how thick musket grips were. I have, I have no idea. But it feels a little thinner than a lot of Nerf blasters. It's obviously an old-fashioned rifle grip, which is angled forward. It's a little awkward. It's a little thin, but overall, it's a pretty comfortable blaster to hold. And moving back to the stock, this is a non-adjustable, non-removable stock in line with muskets, because this used to just be one big piece of wood back when guns were made of wood. <laughs> And in the back, this is a cool cosmetic piece, but this doesn't open or anything like that. That's an external overview of the musket, but going over the cosmetics of the musket for something like this, that's important. It looks really cool. I love all the little gold details they put in here. The sling mounts actually swivel. The 3D print quality seems really, really good. It is 3D printed, and I've handled a lot of 3D printed stuff, but I really wouldn't be able to tell this was 3D printed from like 20 feet away. The print quality is super fine. Overall, super good looking musket. That's an external overview of this blaster, and I'll show you it firing. Starting with Worker Gen 3 half-length darts.
blue Nerf rival rounds. And now some elite darts to simulate musket accuracy. <laughs> Operating this blaster is not like anything else I've ever fired. It's a muzzle-loading musket. Like, oh my gosh, it's super slow. But it's oddly satisfying to shoot this thing. I feel so much more connected to the power of the blaster because I'm not using a pump grip, I'm not using a bolt action, I'm not using batteries, I'm just mechanically, physically pushing back the plunger rod. So it gives it an extremely tactile feel, which is very unique. I've never primed a blaster like this. It was, it was interesting. And I did not experience any jams and malfunctions with this blaster, but frontline was very clear. You do not load the blaster and then prime it. If you try to shove a dart into the barrel and then prime it through the dart, you're gonna shove that dart into the plunger tube, which will cause a jam that requires blaster disassembly. So to avoid that, definitely prime first, and you have to be very careful with loading that dart into the barrel. There's a little notch on the ramrod to make sure you don't shove it in too far, but that's with darts. If you're using rival rounds, the, the rival rounds don't actually fit into the rear barrel. So you're not able to make that mistake. If you're just looking for casual fun, I would really stick with rival rounds for that reason. So very unique firing experience, because it's, it's a flipping musket. And I got surprisingly consistent shots and pretty good accuracy with the worker gen 3 darts and the rival rounds. Elite darts were elite darts, but honestly, if you're trying to replicate the accuracy and precision of a musket, elite darts might be for you. <laughs> Muskets were not accurate firearms at all. To compare the performance to this blaster to others, I put it up on my chronograph. With nerf elite darts, I achieved an average velocity of 123 feet per second. And with rival rounds, achieved an average velocity of 84 feet per second. As I mentioned, the rival rounds don't actually get loaded into the proper barrel, but the darts do. So it makes sense that the darts shoot a lot harder than the rival rounds. And these chrono results are for the one 130 FPS version available from Frontline Foam, but they have different power levels available. This is the 130 FPS version. That's the objective information I can think of to provide on this blaster, now to my personal opinion. Overall, my opinion is surprisingly positive. I was not expecting to have so much fun shooting a musket. The loading procedure is very unique. I've never shot anything else like this, and it really made me stop to think about every single shot I was taking because it took so dang long to load, so it made me really appreciate and savor every single shot. And it shoots surprisingly accurate with worker darts or rival rounds, so the performance performance, besides the rate of fire, is surprisingly good. But of course, you don't buy a blaster like this to compete in a nerf battle. This is a LARPing toy. This is a cosplay toy. This is for the emotional response of using a musket. And for that role, my opinion is really positive. It looks great. I love the shell design. The print quality is super good. The colors look good. The design, the shell lines, everything just looks solid. And I'm really impressed that it doesn't shoot like 40 or 50 FPS. It doesn't just fart out the dart. It shoots it pretty hard and it shoots it pretty accurately, which can make it a lot more fun if you're LARPing with ammo. So my overall opinion of this blaster, given it its class is positive. Now to the question, to buy or not to buy. I would recommend this blaster to someone who's LARPing or cosplaying, you want a musket, but you want it to shoot nerf darts. This blaster actually shoots similar to what other nerf rival blasters are shooting on the market. You can shoot in a reasonably straight line and really have fun shooting at your friends without hurting them. Now, 123 FPS out of the short darts is pretty high velocity, but the rival rounds are very manageable. So you can shoot someone pretty close up and you're not gonna hurt them. And Frontline has different power options available. So if you want more oomph on it, you can get that. Just keep in mind when you're priming back that spring, you're going to have to apply a little bit more pressure. So the purchase recommendation really comes down to what kind of LARPer you are, or what kind of cosplayer you are. If you're looking for the absolute best fit and finish and the performance in the launching of the darts doesn't matter, I don't think this one's for you. I don't think any 3D printed product is going to be right for you. I think injection molded plastic, wood, real metal, and other materials are going to be better if you're a super, super detail oriented prop person. But if you're looking for something that looks good, still acts like a toy and shoots well, yeah, definitely consider this one. Unfortunately, that's as deep as my purchase recommendation can really go since I'm not really into LARP or cosplay. But now I want to try it out just because I've been playing with this so much. <laughs> so that's kind of a lame purchase recommendation, but hopefully I've laid out all the information you need to make an educated purchase decision on your own. If you'd like to buy one of these, check out frontlinefoam.com. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And because it's all 3D printed, you can customize the color. So if you don't want it to look like a musket, you can get it in blue and orange if you want to. I think this color combination looks pretty cool though, and it does have the orange tip up front, just in case someone thinks you're crazy enough to use an actual musket. <laughs> What year is it? So super goofy review of a foam flinger, not a cosplayer, but hopefully I did the blaster justice. And thank you very much to Frontline Foam for sending over this sample for review. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, bros. And as always, stay tactical.